All right. Welcome back to another episode of my movie review series, episode 217. Now, last week I said that I was I was going to Paris Island survive recruit training, survive PT. Then I'll be off to Vietnam. Full metal jacket. 1987. Oh, boy. This movie, Full Metal Jacket. A lot to say about this movie. A whole lot to say about this movie. This, uh, this, a lot to say about this, uh, this war epic. (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, two parts this movie is not broken up to, but the story is told in two parts, you know, from a recruit training and then in the uh, Vietnam War itself. But yeah, you know, this movie, you know, directed produced and co-written by the late great Stanley Kubrick you know starring Matthew Modine Adam Baldwin Vincent D'Onofrio Lee Elmery Artie Elmery <laughs> Dorian Harewood Her- Artis Howard Kevin Major Howard Ed O'Ross. But yeah, man, this movie though. Yeah, like I said, this is pretty much, yeah, a war epic. <clears throat> a lot of favorites on a lot of people's lists, I tell you that. A lot of, it's a it's a huge favorite on a lot, a lot a huge favorite on a lot of people's lists. And yeah, man. Yeah, this movie comes in two parts, you know. Recruit training. You know, you got the uh you got these guys getting ready to uh go off into um you know, they they're getting ready to go to in, into uh to Nam. But first they got to survive Paris Island, they got to survive recruit training, they gotta survive PT. They gotta survive um, gunnery drill Sar- sergeant Hartman. Gunnery, uh, gunnery sergeant Hartman, the singer drill instructor. They gotta survive him. <laughs> they can get to uh, they can get past him and his toolage. Then they were ready. Then they will be ready to be. In a world of shit, once they get their selves over to uh, to Nam. But yeah, I tell you, man, this movie though, it's a hell of a picture, Jack. It's a hell of a picture. You know, introduce you to uh, quite a few. Interesting characters, you know. Uh, Joker. <laughs> Character named Joker. Private Joker. Cowboy. Goma Pile. Private Snowball. <laughs> I don't think we actually... Uh, have, we, have we actually seen Snowball's face? I mean, every time we see his face on camera... He's always screaming, yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> that's, seriously, that's, that's the only time you've seen him. You know, you've never seen him with a, a calm face. You just see him just screaming, sir, yes, sir. 
So yeah, have you seen Snowball's face? Clearly, before, I mean, the other three cats, you know, Joker, Pile, and uh, Cowboy, you seen their faces, you know what they look like. I mean, when they was getting their haircuts, you know, you know, you saw the, uh, you saw, you saw, you saw everybody's, um, face right there. So, yeah, Snowball, you know, that's the only time you would get to see it, but did you really recognize him there, too? There too? I mean, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you know, when Hartman gives the, uh, when Hartman gives the, um, the, um, uh, nicknames. Yeah, proper Snowball. You like that name? Sorry, I'm sorry. What do you want, my private snowball? If they don't serve fried chicken at all, man. I'm on a daily basis in my mess hall. Uh, excuse me, that's racist. <laughs> Even though he said that there's no racial, racial bigotry here, he don't look down on niggers, kikes, wops, and breezers. Hell, they're all equally, equally worthless. <laughs> but hey, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I tell you, you know, like I said, you know, if, if they can survive Hartman, then yeah, they can survive anything that Vietnam would throw at them. So yeah, man. But yeah, you know, once training started, you know, there's always that one guy. There's always that one guy to lag behind, you know. There's always that one guy to uh, to be a problem amongst the entire group. Anywhere. Anywhere. Not just in training. You know, not just in recruit training, PT. You know, not just there. But anywhere, you know. Hell, football. Basketball, you know, any type of sport tryout, hell, any job that you have, you know, you guys got to have a group effort to get a job done, but there's always that one guy that lags behind, and yeah, right here, this movie right here, this, this is one guy, you know. Leonard Lawrence, a.k.a. Goma Pyle. Yeah, he's the one that lags behind, you know. Kind of out of shape guy, you know. But yeah, you know. Yeah. It was, a, uh, you know, it was when, um, not only that he would get punished, it came to the point that not only that he would get punished, but the entire platoon would get punished too. So yeah, anytime Powell fucks up, the, the uh, platoon is going to pay for it. Okay, this fool leaves his foot locker unlocked because he has a nice little jelly donut hidden inside of it. You know, sneak in a little midnight snack, I guess. <laughs> so, when uh, Hartman saw that the footlock was unlocked, boy, he got on his ass so bad. Yeah, this was the last straw, because, you know, he has been uh, lagging behind. He'd been, uh, he'd been fucking up. So, yeah, this was the last straw. So, you know, anytime that Gomer Powell fucks up, you're not going to punish him. You're going to punish the entire platoon. And they owe him one chili donut, so they got to drop down and do some push-ups. While he stands there, he eat it. Yeah, ready? Exercise! One, two, three, four, I love the Marine Corps! <laughs> Yeah, I'm used to here trying to uh, pretend to chew and do count at the same time. Yeah, he tried that. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. One, two, three, four. <laughs> but yeah, that was you know that was him, boy. Yeah, they do uh they do their counting and he's standing there eating. Yeah, that Joe don't know, you know. It's not tasting so good now, is it? <laughs> Yeah, man. <clears throat> yeah, I'll tell you though. Most people may agree that the first part of the movie, you know, the first, you know, part one of the movie, you know, it would be the best part of the whole movie because, you know, there's you no know, once part two. Once we once we slide into uh, part two, once we slide into the war, that's where it feels like the uh, entire movie has completely shifted. It one hundred percent changed. It's, 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 it's another movie now. It's a whole whole other movie. You know, it's the same story, but it's a whole other movie because you know, you see these guys you now. You see, uh, you see these guys, you know, different, different faces, but you know, you see Joker, you know, he, he got a head full of hair again, and uh, he's not training no more. He getting a uh, full military guard, you know, not like this, you know. This, this is just a nice little outfit that I picked out. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice little outfit that I picked out, you know. <laughs> but yeah, you know, yeah, I got high respect for the military, so you know. Got these here. Got my tags again, you know. Great for the occasion of doing this review here, so, you know. Nice hat, too. <laughs> but yeah, you know. But yeah, you know. Yeah, you went from um, recruit training, which everybody feels um, more connected to, and then you get the actual war. Which everybody kind of feel um, imbalanced with, kind of. I'm not saying that um, this is the um, worst part of the movie because it really isn't. Because this, no, you know, the war it start to uh, make everything a hell of a lot better. You know, you know, we um being uh, reintroduced to. Uh, to everybody, you know, to our Joker and um, Cowboy, but we also being reintroduced to uh, we we also being introduced to um, other soldiers, you know, Animal Lover, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, talk about somebody that uh, talk about you know the uh, the tough guy of the group, you know, <laughs> you know, you know he, he uh. He uh he don't play well with others, but you know you can see that you yeah you can tell that he's a he's a real cool he's a real cool cat he's an okay cat a bit of a racist cat but he's a <laughs> okay cat once you know once you have some downtime you know yeah I say he's a racist cat because you know yeah all fucking niggers must fucking hang. <laughs> I mean, hey, that's what he said, not me. I mean, hey. So, yeah, you know. <laughs> but, hey, this is the 60s. You no, know, the 60s, you no, know, uh, what, what year did Nob start? You know, around the mid to late 60s. That was the longest war in American history before the current war that is still going on today. That, um, the, uh, Iraq and Afghanistan war still going on today. Started back in 2001 and it's still going on today. You know, our boys pretty much forgotten over there. <laughs> but hey, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> this is not that. It's not that type of forum. But yeah, you know, anyway, you know, Animal Lover, you know, he's a. Uh, Okay, guy, bit of racist guy, but okay, guy, you know. But you know, and then you got a cat named Eight Ball, you know. 
And then you have the uh, other cast there, you know, Joker, you know, he, uh, he, uh, responsible for this one cat named Rafterman, you know, all these nicknames, you don't know the, the, the they don't know, we don't know the real, we don't know the real names, but all these nicknames, but yeah, you know, but yeah, you know, other, all other characters, it's like a huge slew of characters that we all get to know and we all get attached to very quickly very quickly so yeah once you know somebody gets hit and gets taken out you know a casualty become a casualty of war then you know we don't feel too attached to them until it is really one of ours and that's when we got we got affected by it when Cowboy gets it. Yeah, spoiler alert, I know. But hey, you know, you should have seen this movie before you watch this review. If you have not seen this movie, why the fuck you watch this review? So yeah, man. Cowboy, once he gets it, then you know that's when we get hit by it, cause you know You know, we were there along with him, you know. You know, Cowboy Joker Pile, you know, well, you know, Pile committed suicide because you know he got a uh, he got a little bit crazy after uh, after one night. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get back to that, but still, you know, Cowboy, he gets uh, when well, he gets wasted, you know, that's when um, that's when uh, the shit just got real for us. So yeah, you know. They go into uh, yeah, they go into uh, find a sniper that did it. There's only one sniper, and he pretty, and they pretty much got him pinned down. We got them pinned down, even though even though we got we got we got an entire squad. There's this one sniper across the way in a building. They got them pinned down because you can't see where the sniper is at. We just know that he is, that they are in in that area. Sniper is in that area. So yeah, they gotta. It's in the area. It's in a certain direction. Yeah, because you know one of the uh, one of the other soldiers, uh, Doc J. You know he uh, yeah he pointed at the he pointed where the sniper was at. Animal animal asked him. You know, yeah, Doc, Doc, where's the sniper? Yeah, you know, yeah, Doc, you know, you pointed, sniper let off a few shots, took him out. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, we now know where he's at, where it's at. Try not to give away the gender here, but hey, like I said, you know, if you have not seen the movie, but yeah, we, um, so yeah, we know where the sniper is, but you know, we still gotta, still gotta um, keep caution. So yeah, you know they, uh, so yeah, yeah, they going to um, go, you know, split up in a few groups and uh, go and uh, go and uh, see um, what is a better, better um, vantage point that they can, they can. Uh, get to uh, find the sniper and it was Joker that found the sniper but unfortunately his rifle was out of ammo yeah so you know yeah he's saying uh, yeah he, he sees the sniper he lets off a shot but you know you just hear that click sniper turns around and there's a chick yeah so yeah she starts to uh yeah, she, so yeah, she starts to let off, let, let off some rounds, and Joker, he is pinned down under fire, you know, he takes out his pistol, but he is pinned down under fire, but hey, who's the one that gets the sniper? A rafter man, you know, throughout the um, second half of this movie, you know, rafter man, you know, he, he was just the, um, 
He was just the, um, the, uh, the photographer, you know, reporter for Stars and Stripes, and he was the photographer. And you know, he never had he never had too much uh he never had too much fuel time. He wants some fuel time, you know. He don't want to just take pictures all the time. He want to get into the shit, you know. He wants some trigger time, you know. So, yeah, you know, when the when the opportunity came to um go with uh, Joker to the uh to um to get into the shit. You know, he took the opportunity, even though Joker did not want him to go because, you know, he's he's responsible for him, you know. So, yeah, Raptor Man, he took out the sniper. Yeah, he fucking blew her away. <laughs> he's a life taker and a heartbreaker. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, yeah, the rest of the guys, you know, they uh they gather around the they get around the sniper, you know. She's laying there dying, praying. Yeah, no more boom boom for this baby son. Yeah, fuck her. Let her rot. Yeah, Joker, you know. He suggests that uh they can't leave her like this, so he got to, uh, so, you know, he, he, uh, he, 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 he just, he just saying, can't even like this, got put out of her misery, so, yeah, you know, animals say, you know, you want to waste her, go ahead, waste her, <laughs> yeah, so, he does jump, you know, he, uh, he, he takes his pistol, and, you know, she's laying there begging for, uh, for him to shoot her, he takes his pistol, Boom. We don't see it. But hey, put it right put that bullet right in their head. Hardcore man. Fucking hardcore. So yeah. <laughs> Joker, he wanna be the first kid on this block to get a confirmed kill. Well hey. You got your confirmed kill, Joker. You were born to kill, right? You got your confirmed kill. Now, how do you feel about that? Because, you know, war change a man. <laughs> but, hey, as the narrator of this movie, you know, he, uh, he said, closing lines, you know, he said, you know, he's in the world of shit, but he's, but he's alive, and he's not afraid. So yeah, you know. But I tell you though, man, yeah, a lot went on in this movie. A lot went on. A lot of key moments. A lot of plot. A lot of um, key plot moments. A lot went on in this movie too much to uh, get into. I don't want to go into it very much. I don't want go to go into it too long. But yeah, you know, like I said minutes ago, you know, mentioned the uh, the suicide of um, Gomer Pyle. Because, you know, yeah, that cat, he had it. He had it bad. He had it. He had it bad. I mean, yeah, he kept messing up. And then once um, he got under Joker's tutelage, you know, you know, Hartman assigned both of them together. Yeah. 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 He promoted, he promoted, um, he fired Snowman and he, Snowball, and he promoted Joker into Squad Leader. So, he, uh, assigned Powell to, uh, bunk with him. Yeah. Yeah. Joker, he would teach how everything he'll teach him how to pee. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, when I'm so yeah, once Joker he taught Powell how to uh to be a real marine, you know. You know he was starting to improve, but at the same time he was still messing up. 
And yeah, you know, one night, one night the entire platoon, they had it. Okay, they're sick of these damn punishments. They're sick of these damn punishments that they have to do because of him. So what the what they gonna do? They're gonna take matters into their own hands. They're gonna wanna take a fresh bar of soap, put it in the towel, wrap it up, get a towel next to a twist. You no. Know? So yeah, you know. All of them. All at once. Nobody took turns. It was all at once, you know. You know, power, he's in a He's laying, he's laying in his in his bunk sleep. So, um, cowboy, he got his uh, he got this gag he put around Powell's mouth. Four guys, you know, they put the sheet over him, and they uh, pull it down so he could be pinned down up. He'd be pinned down under it, and everybody, the rest of the platoon, they just started whacking him, whacking him. Whacking him down the line, they started whacking him all over his body. Yeah, just beating, beating the shit out of him with that fresh bar of soap, wrapping the towel. Even Joker had to do it. You know, he's part of platoon, so yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, cop, yeah, yeah, cowboy, yeah, yeah, do it, do it. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, Joker. Boom. Boom. Yeah, he ducked back under his bunk, and now the rest of the guys, you know, take that, and uh, they leave the sheet. And yeah, Cowboy tell him, remember, it's just a bad dream, fat boy. And yeah, yeah, he disappears. So, yeah, after that, you know, after that beating, you know, yeah, he never messed up again. Not only he never messed up again, but he wasn't really the same again. I mean, you know, he developed the uh, he developed this this stare. You know, he got this death stare now. You know, yeah, he's a real badass now. But yeah, we uh, we saw something that he can do very well. This cat, he can shoot. You know, not only he can shoot, but the last night on the island. You know, he was in the uh, he was in the bathroom. He was in the head, and you know he was loading in his rifle. Live rounds, seven six two millimeter, full metal jacket. Yeah, so he load the round in, you know. Joker, he drew fire watch, so, so you know. Yeah, he's uh he's up keeping watch while everybody else is asleep. Everybody else for Powell. So yeah, you know, Powell, you know he started to uh he started pretty much to start to flip out, you know. Yeah, look shorter. Uh, right shoulder. Uh, lock and load. Order. Uh, this is my rifle. There are many like it, but this one is mine. I mean, you know, Hartman. You know, his room is right across from the bathroom. The head. Yeah, so he gets out. He goes in there. What is this Mickey Mouse shit? Why is perfect private power in my head out the lights out? Why aren't you stopping private power's guts out? <laughs> but yeah, you know, Joker had to uh, let him know. Yeah, so, yeah, Hartman, you know, in a very calm voice, it's the first time you hear him calm in this movie. <laughs> he and I, you listen, Private Pyle, and you listen good. I want that weapon. Or place it at the deck at your feet and step back away from it. 
What is your major malfunction, numb nuts? Did mommy and daddy show you enough attention for you a child? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pal, yeah, he pointed that rifle. Loaded shot on loaded shot on Hartman. And then, you know, at the point of that joker, you know, he sat his ass down on one of the toilets, you know, turned the rifle to himself, put it in his mouth, boom. Let out one shot, brains all over the wall. Oh boy. You know, even though he made it out of recruit training, you know, he graduated, you know, he just couldn't handle it, just couldn't handle it, you know, but yeah, I'll tell you though, yeah, this movie, yeah, it's one huge war epic, you know, told in two parts of the same story, one huge war, war epic, you know, you get to uh, know a lot of the uh, recruits. You get to know a lot of the soldiers. You get to be attached to some of the recruits. You get to be attached to some of the soldiers. You know, even though Animal Lover, you know, he's not a very good guy, you know. <laughs> he's a little bit of an okay guy. A bit of a racist, but he's a little bit of an okay guy. <laughs> and, yeah, you know, we find, we find uh, ourselves rooting for him. Once he starts to, uh, you know, get into uh, his, uh, his uh, little Rambo moment here. Yeah, fuck you, cowboy. Fuck all you assholes. Yeah, he gets over the wall. He get, He's running towards the sniper. Where the sniper is firing, he's running towards. And he's unloading some shots. So, yeah, man, I tell you. This movie had a lot of great moments, though. A lot of great moments. A lot of great moments in recruit training. A lot of great moments in the war. And like I said, you know, a lot of great moments, you know. Um, and one moment in a movie that was so great that this now legendary rap group named Two Live Crew. I had to mention this. Come on. I mean. Duh. Here's a this one rap group named Two Live Crew. They took a line from this movie and they made a highly controversial song over it, you know. Ah, we so horny. Ah, uh-uh, we so horny. Ah, we so horny. Me love you all the time. You know. <laughs> you know, and they took the, um, they took that line, you know, they took the, uh, um, you know, the, uh, uh, a voice clip, an audio clip from the movie, from this movie, in that particular scene, they took that and they put it in the, uh, the start of the other uh, song. Yeah, me so horny, me so horny, me love you a long time. Yeah, so yeah, you know, took that sound bite and they just made a huge hit afterward, a huge hit in it, man, a huge controversial hit, but yeah, a huge hit, you know, but yeah, I just have to, I just have to mention that, I just have to mention that, <laughs> hey, it's legendary, you know, this movie is legendary, so yeah. Yeah, movie is straight 5 out of 5, though. That's my review, Jack, and I'm sticking to it. Now, now next week. Now next week, I get right back into the horror field. Next week, man. Next week. Next week is the 4th of July. Now, what horror movie is dated in the 4th of July? Uh, I can only think of one. Actually, two. But I'm doing the first one first. I might do the first one, period. Should I do the second one? I don't know. I'll get to that whenever. But yeah, if there's just one movie dated in the 4th of July that I'm going to be covering next week. Yeah, they took the concept of an urban legend, you know. And they just gave it to you in a post 
Scream era. So, yeah. The Gordon Fisherman is not just a box mascot anymore. <laughs> yeah, Skip Lunatic with a hook for his hand. We're doing everybody a favor. So, yeah, man, keep your eyes locked for that for next week. Check out my other shit right here and subscribe to me right here. But in the meantime, in between time, Jack, this show is all.